What's going on YouTube? So since Ford has moved to a lineup of only trucks and SUVs, it's not surprising that they're spending a lot of effort keeping said SUVs up to date. Now the Edge just underwent an extensive refresh in 2019. However, for 2021, Ford is turning its attention to the interior and the technology. So does a 12 inch display and other enhancements help the Edge fight off all the new competition? Let's go ahead and find out. So like I just mentioned at the beginning, Ford has focused their attention on the interior this year. So as far as the exterior is concerned, you're not really going to see any meaningful differences for 2021. So starting up here in the front, this is the latest edge grille that was updated in 2019. Kind of has a softer overall shape. Um, and then you have two different finishes. You have this silver finish on the luxurious trim levels like this titanium. And then you also have the sport mesh finish on the ST line and ST trim levels. Now coming over here to your headlights next, we have LED headlights standard on every single version of the edge, both the low and high beams, as well as the daytime running light. However, the turn signal is incandescent. And then down here at the bottom, Ford does also throw in LED fog lights on all but the base model. Now, next up, we have our wheel options. Of course, you do have plenty of different choices depending on your trim level with the titanium. This is the standard 19 inch nickel finished alloy wheel. Um, it's a little bit plain, not a lot of pizzazz going on here, but if you choose the titanium elite package, that will give you a 20 inch alloy that's significantly flashier. In addition, that same package will also throw in body colored uh, lower moldings to give that more premium look. Now, checking out the mirrors, of course, they are body colored here. We have the LED turn signal, standard blind spot monitoring, and standard heating. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the Edge's rear design. So for 2021, there's not going to really be any changes or anything like that for this model. Uh, although, I do think this is still a very stylish vehicle despite its age. Now, breaking down the individual design elements that you're going to get in the rear, as you can tell right here, you do have this piece right here, which is blacked out. That gives it a more uh, aggressive look than what you would expect. And you do have edge branding in the middle. And then off to the side, you're gonna have these full LED taillights. I'm very happy every individual element in here is LED, including the reverse light. And if we drop down to the bottom, we do have a nice chrome trim as well as our dual exhaust outlets. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the safety systems. Now, of course, that's a really important part of any family SUV like this. And Ford's gonna give you most of them standard. So their Copilot 360 package is gonna include Ford Emergency Braking and Pedestrian Detection, Lane Keeping Assist, and Auto High Beams. And additionally, you do have the option of getting the Copilot 360 Plus package that will also throw in adaptive cruise control. Well, anyway, guys, that's gonna sum up the exterior design for this Ford Edge. Now let's go ahead and check out the interior, but before we do that, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. So on the Ford Edge, you will find a standard smart entry system across every single model, and if you choose the Titanium or ST, that will also include the remote start system. Now, of course, like every Ford, to get inside, just grab behind the handle since there is a sensor. All right, and taking a look inside of the cabin, uh, you will pretty immediately notice that there are definitely some changes for this 2021 model, namely that gigantic display right there in the middle that we will talk about in a little bit. But let's first get into your different interior color and material options. So for pretty much all of your trim levels, you have cloth seats or cloth and leather trim seats on the ST and ST line models. However, when you get to the titanium trim level, that's where you'll get these full leather seats and they come in your choice of ebony, ceramic, or cognac color options. 
Now turning over here to your door trim, it is nicely appointed as you'd expect for the top and titanium. So we do have a leather that covers the armrest as well as above it. Both of them do have a stitching detail and the top part of the door trim is nicely padded. Of course you have standard three person memory seating and your windows are one touch auto up and down for the driver and passenger. And taking a look at the seats, pretty much every version of the Edge does come with a 10-way power adjusting seat with two-way lumbar support. And like I was already mentioning, we do have genuine leather seats on board. Uh, it has a pretty nice looking design, some color contrast stitching, and you can get perforated leather seats if you choose the higher end model. Now beyond that display, we do have some material differences for 2021. So across our upper dash, this is all going to be finished in a textured soft touch plastic. As we move down below that, we have a textured silver trim. Dropping down lower, this is going to be padded. However, the side part here, this is hard touch now. The center portion of the last one we were in was piano black. As you can see with this one here, we have a more aesthetically appealing silver textured trim as well and the build quality in here feels a lot more solid than the last one we tested. Now start up the edge, put your foot on the brake and press the button. And once the vehicle starts up, you'll be greeted with the same gauge cluster as you had last year on your upper end models. So what you basically have is a analog speedometer and then two 4.2 inch multi-function displays that flank both sides of it. Each one has its own set of functions that you can scroll between, including this one here can actually operate as a digital tachometer. Now coming back to the steering wheel, this is also pretty much the same as last year. Of course it is nicely leather wrapped and heated here on the titanium model. And then as far as your adjustment, that is going to be manual. Okay, so now let's go ahead and turn to our interior storage where we have some modifications for 2021. So I'll start out underneath of our center console here. Uh, when you first open that up, you do have a small little bin with a felt lining. This does pull out and you can throw that off to the side. And then you can see inside of this main storage area, this is very deep. It goes all the way down here to the floor. There is a small felt lining at the bottom as well. And we do have a 12 volt outlet inside. So I can definitely tell that when we put this thick stack of coupons in here, I mean, look at that, fit no problem whatsoever. Actually, I could put a double stack if I wanted to. Up in front of that, we've got a little slit here. We have two cup holders. We have another little slit right there. Uh, we have some more storage in this area for 2021 though. Um, you'll notice that we have this large area here, which is a wireless phone charging pad. You also have your regular connections. There's no longer a cover. However, over here we now have a center pass through. So this is new for 2021. And as you can see, you could stick, you know, a reasonably sized object back there and no one would really notice it and it would hold itself in place. Now coming back to the shifter, this is for its typical electronic shifter. So you're just gonna twist over to D for drive. You can press the S if you wanna activate your sport mode and you can shift manually with the standard paddle shifters. Heading into reverse, you'll be greeted with the standard backup camera. Um, as you can see, it does take up the top part of this new display. Uh, the lower part is going to be for your parking sensor visualization. And if you choose to have the optional package on the, this titanium or the ST model, that would also throw in a front 180 degree camera. So you would have a front and rear camera, though not a full 360 camera. And for park, twist over to the P, of course, and you have your electronic parking brake located right behind that. Now there's one more thing to check out before we get up to the display, and that is our audio. So standard on the titanium as well as the ST is the premium 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. So we'll go ahead and give that a sample right now. Wow, 
so overall sound quality of this system is definitely top notch. This is a really loud and very full sounding sound system. Okay, so now let's get to the elephant in the cabin, and that is our brand new 12 inch display. Um, obviously this dominates the interior now in terms of design, um, and it's the largest screen in the class, Ford says. So with this, you basically have the updated uh, Ford Sync 4A system, just like what we showed you guys in the uh, Mustang Mach-E just a couple weeks ago. Now before I really get into the infotainment features, I want to take a look at this lower part of the display because this is our climate controls this year. So what we now have is a standard dual zone automatic climate control system across every single trim level that is new for 2021. And to make your adjustments, you're just gonna tap right there. You can use these little arrows or you can also take this slider up and down to adjust your temperature. That of course is for your fan speeds and operates the same way. Then you've got your zones and you also have your button here to turn on and off your heated steering wheel and the three stages of your standard heated seats here with the titanium trim level. You can also get optional seat ventilation. Now, like I was saying, this is Ford Sync 4A, so there's a lot of new features on board. I'm not gonna talk about everything in detail here because this is a very complicated new system. However, you do have some interesting tricks. You'll notice I have written subscribe onto the screen here. Uh, so you do have like note taking ability. Uh, it runs in a tabbed interface, just like that Mach-E that we looked at a couple weeks ago. So you can just tap on these little tabs here and it will pop up and you have basically multitasking ability. Now inside of this, I just opened up Android Auto. This is running wirelessly. So you have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Now up above that, we have a auto dimming mirror and your home link remotes are located here in the visor. And then up at the very top, we've got the optional panoramic sunroof. This is available on most of the trim levels of the Edge for $1,500. Alrighty, so I'm in the Edge's rear seat, and the first thing that I notice is just there's a lot of space back here. That's probably one of the best things about this Edge is that it is larger than the competition. Um, so you're going to have 40 inches of both leg and headroom, which like I just mentioned is above that of like a Hyundai Santa Fe as well as a Nissan Murano. And behind your seating position I have, I would say, six, six and a half inches of rear leg room, and my feet can definitely slide up underneath of the seat. Now, as far as our features are concerned, here in the center, we do have vents. If we drop down, we have a little storage cubby. We also have a USB Type-C, a smart charging USB port, and a household style outlet. I do wanna point out that you can get heated rear seats optionally on the Titanium and ST model, although this one does not have it. And if we fold down the center armrest, there are cup holders inside. Now, walking up to the tailgate, it is gonna be power hands-free here on this Titanium model. So in order to open, just wave your foot under the bumper and it does open right up. Now, as far as the space is concerned in the cargo area, this is also gonna be larger than a lot of the main rivals like the Santa Fe and Murano. Since you're gonna have 39 cubic feet behind the second row seats, that expands all the way up to 73 cubic feet if you fold them. That's a lot of space and certainly you can feel it back here. It completely swallows up our camera equipment. And as far as how they finished it, we do have a really nice carpeting along the floor. If we lift it up, there is a spare tire up underneath of the floor. And then off to the left side, we do have buttons to fold the seats. So I think that's actually a pretty nice touch to have like a power button here to fold the seats. And we also have a 12 volt outlet and they do fold 60, 40 split. Now here at your passenger seat, it is going to be power adjusting on this fully loaded model. Then if we look at the glove box here, this is a pretty decent sized glove box. It's not the biggest one I've ever seen, but as far as our coupons, you know, this is a hugely important part about any vehicle you can buy. Um, well, they fit in there just fine, so you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, although it's not as big as maybe some of the rivals. And we can look up top, you'll find a sun visor with lighting as well as a mirror and you can also detach and extend. All right, and 
now we're up to 60 miles per hour with this edge so as far as the updates like I said really focused on the interior um, there's gonna be no changes to the powertrain situation so we still have the 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine 250 horsepower 275 pound feet of torque as you may know a couple years ago Ford got rid of the naturally aspirated V6 engine so this is your mainline choice besides for the of course upgraded EcoBoost engine you get with the ST yeah and if you are considering that ST it's gonna be quite a bit of a power boost at 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque now as far as your transmission you've got an 8-speed automatic on board uh, this is a pretty nice and smooth transmission uh, you don't really notice it most of the time uh, however under heavy acceleration there is sometimes a little bit of a rough shift. Yeah. Um, that's just some little thing I notice. Most of the time you're just going to be cruising around, and when you're doing that, um, it really just blends into the background. Right, but we've been talking a lot about the powertrains and all that and that really is not the edges focus by any means this vehicle is really just made to cruise down the highway going around 60 miles an hour like this and do so in really really a lot of comfort so I do want to mention the ride quality is excellent we've hit a few bumps it really soaks it up this is very comfort focused as opposed to any type of sport or anything like that and I am also just very pleased these seats are really really yes, comfortable very comfortable now I will also get a sound level reading going 55 miles per hour so we can compare to some of its rivals. And we're looking at 54.2 decibels. That's a really, really good reading that is actually on par with a lot of the luxury vehicles that we test um, going 55. All right, and as far as the fuel economy is concerned for the Edge, um, this one as equipped is gonna come in at 23 combined. If you go for front drive, that's gonna be 24 combined, um, and that is with the standard two liter engine. So let's get into today's slam dunk and air ball. So um, for the slam dunk today, what we thought was the interior storage up front. Very impressed by this. As you know, with the coupons, this center console is extremely deep, but there's also a ton of different places you can stick your odd and in objects, like your cell phone. There's like several cubbies right here in the front, a big one here, pass through, this little spot on the top. Um, just tons of storage, and I really appreciate when a brand puts a good you know, thought into making it as practical as possible. Yeah. Now, as far as our air ball is concerned, we're going to say that some of the... Uh, fit and finish in here this interior could probably be a little bit more updated although they did change quite a bit of the technology it's a little bit of an older design and to go along with that you have a little bit of build quality issues so this is not put together quite as well as some of the newest four products since this is older alrighty now let's go ahead and talk about the pricing so the 2021 pricing hasn't officially been released yet uh, although we do have the price for this one, of course. So as far as how this one is equipped, our base price for the titanium with all-wheel drive is going to be $40,435. And then when you add in the destination of $12.95 plus our options and minus a few discounts, this one's going to be $44,150 as equipped. So to conclude here, the 2021 updates that Ford has made particularly this new infotainment system, I think really go a long way into making the Edge, um, you know, even more competitive. This definitely has a lot of strong characteristics um, all throughout it, um, but having this very sophisticated brand new infotainment system, I think is something that really stands out from the competition. Well guys, that's going to be all for this in-depth look at the 2021 Ford Edge Titanium. 
We really appreciate you watching this video, and if you made it this far, I know you probably enjoyed watching, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free to you, and all it does is give you notifications on our most recent content if you tap that notification bell as well. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.